So what is decoupage? Um, it is, hi Linda, it is just, it's gluing. It's attaching with some sort of paste or glue medium. Um, I don't know literally what it translates to, but that's all it is. You are gluing something to a surface. Hi, Tara. Um, what can you decoupage? What can you decoupage onto? Just about anything. So, hi, Raquel. Good to see you. Hey, Linda. So, you can decoupage with, with, um, onto just about anything. Metal, um, painted surfaces, wood surfaces, glass. Um, my, my thing would be, if you're not sure, you know, just test a little piece. You can decoupage on laminate, a little bit trickier. So, um, ideally, you want your um, paper to be able to attach with some tooth to it. So, the smoother the surface, um, the more likely it is that it could peel. Having said that, I have never had that happen. But I also have never decoupaged laminate. But I have to glass. Could you probably stick something under there and peel it off? Probably, but who's going to? Um, so it really is a wonderful method. I have, hi everybody, thank you for being here. I have a lot of you tutorials on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook page, but we're just gonna start from the very beginning. So, um, mediums. What do you use as your glue? So, is Mod Podge. And I'll be honest with you, Mod Podge is what I started with, but it is the very last thing I grab. I only use Mod Podge to decoupage one thing, and I'm going to show you what that is in a minute. So, here's why. Um, and there are there are solutions to this, right? Hi, Joy, Smokey. Oh, I'm sorry. That's so awful. So many people are dealing with so much. Um, so it's thick. I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure Mod Podge is Elmer's glue and water or craft glue or school glue and water. But it's thick. And that thickness works against you. In a, in a lot of cases, I use it when I really want a good, strong bond of something, my material has to be thick. So I use it with canvas, which I'm going to show you. And Mary, um, this, is, this is prepping for the project we're going to do when you're here. So I never use my Mod Podge, and I have a nice little buildup of something at the top. It smells like Elmer's glue, and if so, charges double for it. Yeah, exactly, charges double for it. So I know a lot of people who make their own. If Mod Podge was all I had, I would water it down. But, and it, don't get me wrong, it's never failed me, but there's an issue with the thickness, and we'll talk about that when we start talking about papers and why I don't use it. So if you look at, that's how thick Mod Podge is. It has quite a bit of density, or it smells just like school glue. So um, I do use it for one purpose, and I'm going to do that with you in a second. So that's the one that everybody thinks of. Nothing wrong with it. Water it down. When you use Mod Podge with thinner papers, what happens is the Mod Podge um, makes little strips or snakes or um, rows of itself. And if you go to smooth that out, it wrinkles your paper. But typically when I'm using Mod Podge, those little strips show up. They may not show up right away, it might be 30 seconds later, but they show up. I don't run into that with the other mediums. Um, so after that, I started using Liquitex um, Matte Gel Medium. 
I couldn't find it. I know that it's here somewhere, but this is kind of like the same thing. So Liquitex Matte, matte is the finish, so no sheen, and I think that's important to say because I think it just rolls off our tongue like everybody knows what it is. And then medium is just, you know, something that allows you to um, combine two things or I, the words aren't coming to me. So this is one that I have. And this was given to me um, by Ruth, a, a wonderful customer that comes into the store. And this is the same kind of thing, but this is glossy. And I'm gonna show you how to use this. I'm gonna use it on some coasters where I might want a gloss finish. So matte medium, no sheen, gloss medium, sheen. It is thinner than Mod Podge. And one of the things that you wanna think about is open time. So what does open time mean? It's the amount of time that you have before your medium starts drying to the point where it's not workable anymore, like you're stuck, it's there. Some things have a very short open time, so you lay it down and it's like there is no shifting if you don't get it right. Other things have more open time. The thicker you put on your medium, the um, slower it's going to take to dry. That just kind of makes sense. Um, so then what I love to use, so my favorite thing is clear liquid patina. And it's not, I'm not saying this because I'm a DIY paint retailer. Um, I don't sell things because I'm a DIY paint retailer. I'm a DIY paint retailer because I love the products. And so it's what I use, it only makes sense. And let me show you what the difference is. This is a new one because my old one is, um, I'll never get the top off of it. So when I started curing DIY paint and I was told that this was a transfer medium, a sealer and a decoupage medium, I'm like, yeah, right. How can it be wonderful? I was using Mod Podge at the time. It worked for me. Um, this stuff is incredible. So it's a lot thinner. And so it has a really nice open time. So there's enough time to play. And it doesn't cause those ribbons of liquid like the Mod Podge does because it, it doesn't coagulate to itself. It doesn't stick to itself. So that's why I love using it. And I use it almost exclusively for everything. There are um, many, many other decoupage mediums made by other lines. That's great. And just find what works for you. And it would be nice to find a product that works no matter what you want to decoupage, what kind of paper. And clear liquid patina so far has been that. Um, there are two decoupage methods I am not going to talk about. Thank you for the hearts and the thumbs up. That is the iron-on method and the saran wrap method. Those are both um, things that you would look at down the road. This is really supposed to be nuts and bolts 101. Thank you so much for the hearts. Carmen, this is for you. This is decoupage 101. So we were talking about it when I was lucky enough to visit Carmen and she's like, oh my God, make a video. So this will be made into a YouTube video. And I was gonna do it on YouTube, but I thought you guys might have questions. Um, so the iron-on method, I do use it. And what you do with that, and it takes more time as you do, and I do use Mod Podge. A coat of Mod Podge, let it dry. Another coat of Mod Podge, yes, the secret sauce, she does. It is amazing. Let the second coat dry. Um, put your paper down, parchment paper, iron it. Um, that's great, and I do love that for any type of tissue paper, I've got to say. Um, it's good for napkins, too. Napkins I'm not going to get to today. The saran wrap method I've never tried, and what you do is you put, you have your, let's say, piece of furniture, a sheet of saran wrap, then your paper, parchment paper, hot iron, it melts the saran wrap or plastic wrap, and that works as your adhesive. I've never tried it. Um, I have yet to feel like I have a void in 
my decoupage medium. So I seem to, that's Joy, that's, that's kind of what I thought. Joy's saying it works on completely flat surface. Same thing with iron-on, it's the exact same thing, I find. But what I, what I use works for me. So that is those type mediums. What, what, what kind of papers are there? So um, big, big, big in the market right now is rice paper. And again, um, I'm not saying that because I carry rice paper. I love rice paper and decoupage queen has the most amazing images and prior to finding her i used to have to get it out of the country from overseas and it took a long time teresa me too thank you thank you thank you so um i i love rice paper and it really is if you're a total beginner and you're afraid to decoupage it is almost foolproof the rice papers. So I am going to show you a quick little thing with that. So hopefully you can see, it is so forgiving. It's fibery. So if you can see the fibers in there, and I'm just going to tear it a little bit, it's those fibers that make it so forgiving. It doesn't bubble, it doesn't wrinkle. Um, I love rice paper. So that's one of the things. But um, this is just regular paper from a printer, and I can decoupage this. But when I get to papers, and now I'm going to, oh, thank you, Suzanne. I'm going to change my angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. So if I wanted to decoupage this to a board or an old cabinet door, um, it more than likely would wrinkle and bubble. So here is, I promise, the solution. It's this right here. I learned all of this from following. Her name is Barbara Boyles, and she is the purple painted lady, and she has answered so many questions about decoupage. She's done all the tests. So here's what I do. I take my paper and forgive, I've got this box, and normally I spray this outside or it should be a well-ventilated area. This is neither. So I take my paper face down. I take my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Sealer. I think it's a lacquer, um, fast drying, non-yellowing, UV resistant. What this does, it's not water-based. So what this does is imagine putting a sheet of plastic, um, almost like laminating, the back of your paper. Water wouldn't be able to penetrate it. That's what causes the wrinkles and bubbles. It's the water in your medium. So you want to keep the water away. So what I'll do is I'll take and spray the back with a decent coat of, I must really love you guys that I'm doing this indoors. I always do this in my foyer. So I will let this dry. Once it's dry, you can feel a texture on the back. So I will let this dry. Sometimes it does intensify your image. So that that is, that's only, I've only found that on this paper when I paint um, print a photo or something. Well, I also have Monahan papers. Monahan papers, um, this is a Monahan paper. They're 27 pound. They're a little heavier than printer paper. Um, I like to use this on the background of a lot of things. I'm getting ready to use this on the background of one of my projects. So I've already sprayed the back of this paper. So you can see on the Monahan papers, it doesn't discolor it at all. And this is now ready to decoupage. So this is ready to go. Next would be, we've all seen the, um, the furniture tissue papers. So 
the thicker the medium with the thinner the paper, you are way more likely to get wrinkles and bubbles. I spray the back of these as well. And I use my clear liquid patina and it works well. Barbara Boyles, the Painted Lady, she's done um, so much with all of this. This is a metallic wrapping paper. Now, when I use the iron-on method with this, because I really like it for wrapping paper, hi, Joni, the metallic, oh, Pam, thank you. The metallic will lift. So it's really weird that um, a metallic wrapping paper is like layered. This metallic part is attached over the actual paper. And when you use the iron-on method, the paper sticks but the metallic bubbles. So I like to use like a clear liquid patina. They're hard to work with, I'm not gonna lie. But um, I would practice. I did my own jewelry armoire with these papers I'm showing you, that metallic. And then this one has a little bit of metallic in it, but this one ironed on great. I use the iron on method, but I clear liquid patina would work well too. So you can use wrapping paper. Okay. So after it's done and it's gorgeous, and I'm going to show you this, um, and you put a water-based sealer on it, that water will activate the medium underneath your paper. So what you do is another coat of matte sealer. So I've sprayed the back of my paper, decoupage it on, let it dry, spray over the top. Now you can seal it with anything you want. If you think about the sealer as a band-aid, you're putting a band-aid on the back of your paper and on the top of your paper to protect it so nothing gets in. That's what you want to sandwich your paper between this lacquer sealer, and that's non yellowing. This is the only time I use Mod Podge. This is primed canvas, it's um, really heavy, and I like to put it over wood for various wall projects, wall art. This is when I'll use Mod Podge because this is heavy. And if I just use clear liquid patina, it may not have enough meat to it or gel medium. I need something that has some real tooth. So I will use the Mod So this is primed duck canvas. And I'm not going to go through this project. I do have a tutorial on this. Um, so I'm just going to get, and this is raw wood. I almost always paint my wood. This would be the first time in like forever that I haven't painted my wood. But I ran out of prep time. So I so I've got a nice even coat. You don't want to fiddle around with it too long because you don't want it to dry. Now I'm going to take my canvas. I don't have to worry about bubbles, um, like air bubbles with my canvas. It's material. So I'm smoothing that out. And then I'm going to take, Carmen gave me these when I went to visit her. This is just, you know, a plastic gift card from Qdoba. So I'm going to smooth it out. I don't have to be gentle. This canvas, nothing's going to happen to it. Um, but this just makes such a nice background, and it's primed. So I don't have to worry about this. I can set this aside and it'll be good. It's not gonna bubble or wrinkle. So the, the canvas by far is the easiest. Now, rice paper's next. And if you um, are just joining me, the reason that I picked this rice paper is I messed up somebody's order and actually cut into about 10 
rice papers. So they became my project pieces. These are some tile coasters. When, so I'm just gonna put a thin coat of clear liquid patina. I did paint this first in a brighter white called beadboard. So I'm just gonna set that there. And then this is how simple it is. I think I wanna move her up a little bit, but see how I was able to move that? That's like, that's like important. Now I'm thinking, okay, I want this, the moon on there. So that's where, that's where I want it. And I can actually feel some moisture coming through the top because this is kind of, you know, like a, like a fabric. I'm going to gently smooth it out with this card. But that's how easy it is to work with. And I'm going to let that dry. I have some clear liquid patina on my brush. I'm going to go over the top. Normally, I wouldn't do this because any other paper, it would wrinkle and bubble. But rice paper, I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to let it dry. And then I will sand it. So what I wanted to talk about is, and I think this is um, really worth mentioning, is what color do I paint my board before I decoupage? And I showed you the one board, I went right over the wood with the canvas, and I don't ever do that. So this is a purple and blue paper, so maybe I want to paint this blue, you know, or purple. Here's why I'm going to tell you, you always, always, always want to use white. Unless if you're using an all black paper, maybe you want to use black. But when I attach this to the surface, wherever I have white, especially with the rice paper, the black is going to show through and it's not going to be nearly as vibrant. So this is one of my SID tiles already prepped. So let me just show you if I can, see if I can show you the difference. So if you look at this one on the black, it's toned down. Look at how bright it is on the white. So even though your background is colored, if you have white, again, when I flip it, this is not nearly as bright. Let's do it. Here, let's try if I can hold this. This is probably the best way right here. We're side by side. A white background is going to make your picture vibrant. Any other color, that color is going to show through. And I'm not saying that there aren't times that you want, wouldn't want to do a, another color. But with the rice paper, if there's any white in it, I paint a white background, and you can see just how bright that is. So I did something similar, like I said in the beginning of the video a while ago, and I wouldn't be able to find the video if I wanted to. This is a Monahan paper right here. And I, I love it. It's one of the, the newer ones. The stuff over. So I'm more centered on camera. And so what I'll do is, this is a board that, again, I got it from Doris when Doris was still in business. I so miss them. Michael's bought them out to get rid of the competition. Learn that the hard way. Yes, Joy, um... She said, learn that the hard way, but pay, put paper on the front of drawers painted blue and you can hardly see the design at all. And nobody talks about that, right? Nobody talks about that. So you can build your own tray using um, one by lumber. And then let me show you the back of it. 
So look at that. It's just it's just three strips. So it's three boards, and then these are glued and nailed. We can build these, you guys. Nice sanded. So here's what I want to think about when I'm doing this. Um, what color do I want to paint my board? Because my board is bigger than my paper. So I've got to do something with that edge. I always use the Bohemia stamp. And so um, I know that I want it to be something that's going to blend in with my paper. Sandy Blonde, nine times out of ten, is the best color for a background. Um, in this case, I think I could argue crinoline, but I'm going to use Sandy Blonde because I may want to use crinoline for my accents. One of the things that would really, really bother me is this white border. So if I cut it, I get a nice clean edge that isn't necessarily going to want to blend in as much as if I tear it. So let me show you how I do that. Um, actually, let's get this board painted first. So this is a decoupage project start to finish. So this is Sandy Blonde, and I'm just going to paint the entire board. So just a thin coat because most of it's going to be covered. Um, you also want to paint your sides. So I know you probably can't see this, but. I'm going to take my Monahan paper outside. I've already done this, you guys. And I'm going to spray a coat of Rust-Oleum Sealer. And I'm going to let that dry. So fast forward, I let that dry. Set this to the side. I have quite the mess going on here. So I don't like that white border. What I always do is I take a thin paintbrush and some water. And I will take and I will wet the edge and I probably could have done this ahead of time and then I take a straight edge and I tear it. That gives me a more visually appealing edge. Sometimes these tear really easy, sometimes not so much. I could take my razor blade and help it along. opposite. It doesn't need to be perfect. It does need to be straight. So this is always, this is always really scary. So I'm going to move my light a little bit. Line up my T. And you have to make sure you don't shift. So I'm going to use my wallpaper tool. You want your blade long. Okay, there's one. So this is going to be a little bit longer than here, but you'll see what I do as I tuck it in. So, and I'm going to start with this piece right here. 
You got to remember, though, this is my top. This is my bottom. I'm going to use clear liquid patina, and this is sprayed. So here's my clear liquid patina, and I have no clue what's on what brush, so I'm going to have to. So I put it right on my board. And I want to make sure that I have enough. If anything, I would rather have a little too much than not enough. It's no big deal if I get it on the other boards. Okay. Now I'm going to get this centered-ish. I have a little bit of open time, so I'm able to move it, and that's pretty good. Now I'm going to take the credit card, I try not to get the clear liquid patina on top of my paper. Um, that doesn't always work. So I'm going from the center up and down and I don't really have bubbles and wrinkles right now. And if I didn't spray, I would. And then I just go and I tuck that edge in. And that gives it a real nice finished look. And I'm running my, my plastic card and pushing against the board is what I'm doing. Any excess clear liquid patina is helping the stick. That right there is um, sandy blonde because I didn't wait for this to be completely dry. And I meant to dry it and I got sidetracked. So it's been probably 45 seconds maybe since I smoothed this over. That's a really good time to check and see if anything surfaced. And when I tell you this is as smooth as what comes to mind is a baby's butt, which is not an expression that I ever say, but that's how smooth it is. So I'm just running that. get that paper flush against the side of that middle board. There we go. I just have to get this one. And I didn't, like I could have butt it up to one end or, or the other so that I only had to tuck in the one end, but that's not how that wouldn't space this evenly for your other two boards, which would bother me. So now I'm just smoothing it against, I'm like kind of pushing it toward me. Smoothing that edge down. And I'm gonna look to see, oh, here's some, I don't think this is a bubble. I think it's something that was in my paint. I have a little thing sticking up right there. So now I'm going to go. That looks really good. And normally I would have like one of those blue shop claws, which I don't have handy here. I'm going to grab one. I'm already at an hour and just make sure, but when I tell you there is, that is just as smooth as smooth can be, it is awesome. So now just double check that this in fact is the top one. It is. And so I'm gonna get the clear liquid patina on here. Try not to get it on your other paper because it could activate the clear liquid patina and cause 
bubbles. So that's pretty good. I'm going to line it up paying close attention to the edges and the image, both. I need my plastic card. Go. Get those edges down. Again, I'm working from the middle up and down. This edge right here is going to want to curl. That's normal. So you want to make sure that you tuck that down. And it may take going back over it. It may take, I didn't get my clear liquid patina over far enough. So I'm just lifting that edge and tucking it down. Same with this edge right here. I didn't get enough liquid patina on there. Want to smooth this edge down. Tuck this in. And it looks pretty amazing. No bubbles, no wrinkles. And that was one coat of the matte sealer. I do want, I do want that tucked in. So I'm just pushing, using that curd to push it against the side. And then I just have the bottom one to go. Thank you, Carmen. Carmen, do you have this, um, this one design from Monahan? I think it's a newer one, but I'm not positive. Oops. And I don't want it there only because I don't want it to cause bubbles. Right now, if I were to go over this whole thing with any water-based sealer, and clear liquid patina is one, it um, could cause bubbles. So now I'm going to line this one up along that edge. And it's not perfect, but it's good. Doing the same thing, the middle up and the middle down. let this dry and I want to seal it. I'm going to be using this, you know, as a tray. So before I successfully use sealer, I'm going to spray it with the Rust-Oleum to put that plastic barrier to sandwich my paper in between sheets of plastic. Smoothing that both sides of that out. And you want to, like I said, wait 60 seconds to a minute and revisit it to see if anything's poking up. 
but this is so smooth. I know better than to put my finger in there. And I'm going to try and give you guys a side view so that you can see the raw edges, everything. Isn't it awesome? So if you can see, I'm going to try and let the light reflect off of it so you can see how smooth this is. And I'd love to take credit for it, but it's the, it's the spray sealer. Thank you. Isn't this so pretty? Um, so I will, I will finish this. So that edge, I do love this edge, but, um, I've got the, I've got sealer on, on my edge everywhere. I can't just leave that. That will not look good. Um, and what I'll end up doing is painting and then I will use, um, part of the border of the Bohemia stamp and I will drill and put handles on this. So this is what it looks like so far. And the lighting in here is not doing this justice. But hopefully you can see that there are, I mean, look at, so you can see the reflection. There are no imperfections in this. Not a bubble, not a wrinkle. 